and we're a bit squeezed into the corner because we, we need to get... We? Well, you are. <laughs> well, I'm going to make sure I've got all me in shot and there's that much of me to get in shot. Speaking of shot... Hello. <laughs> Welcome to another glorious... Glorious episode of Listener Land. Formerly known as... Listener Land. <laughs> the sound check. The sound check. Sound check. Where we discuss all things topical music, uh, trying to get it out as relevant as possible. Uh, Pull up a chair and join us at the bar. We're just going to waffle for about an hour about music and other things oh. that might be tenuously uh. linked. Lucky, lucky people. Yes. Yeah. Very, <laughs> very. Make it, make it a large JD. <laughs> No, Sorry, we're, we're on icebreaker today. We're starting off on <laughs> drinking IPA, moving off at mic. Moving yeah. off at mic again. Yeah. Some people never learn, you see. <laughs> no. When you when you're a little bit How about the... she was all over me. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I move off at mic and you can't hear what I say. Wayne's got this mute button that as soon as he starts speaking. He's got an internal mute book. Oh, that's that's MI six, or they just that keep, stops yeah, him. You yeah. see, but I don't hear that because I have no idea of that. I do that. You, yeah. <laughs> you want, well, if you watch it, if you watch it on YouTube, you start off like this, and you drift down to this. Start off strong. You know, only dogs can hear you. I, I think it's when batteries start to run out. If, no. you, if you remember how Elton John describes how we put a set together, right. start off strong. Yep. Give him some romance, and then finish strong. Yeah. You start us strong and go for a nap. <laughs> a bit of Grandpa Simpson going off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anything uh, unusual happened this week in the world of music that you uh, you want to talk well, about? Well, I saw today Mr Clapton has sold his guitar, The Fool. The Fool? The Fool. The I Fool. Don't know what The Fool is. No, I don't. It's, I'm not familiar with the fool. No, that's what he called the guitar. Well, which one was it? Um, it's got six strings. It's got six strings. It's got like a funny shaped body and a, a right long neck, a bit like a giraffe. <laughs> wow. What well, I only it's heard got it, that many. Wayne. Yeah, I, I understand why I don't because I know about brownie and things like that. But yeah, well, I only heard it on the news, and so there are obviously no pictures of it. So I don't know what it oh, was. Right, okay. It it's just said the fool. it were at. I think it was Sotheby's. It might have been the New York one. I'm not hundred percent sure on that, but apparently he sold it today uh, for one point seven million dollars. <gasps> one point seven. Yeah, that's a big, isn't it? That? Yeah, it's his most. Uh, it's a lot of first. As you saw, we're not we're not familiar with it. Is. It is. Like Brown didn't get that, and Black isn't, didn't get that. Isn't it? Isn't it the one that's all like multicolored? We like it's got like eyes and things like that on it. What? Oh, didn't that's he, got like that surf blue color. Yeah, didn't he play it at Crossroads? It's all like oh, a, a, a yeah, strange, a blue like an am painted design thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. I've actually all, played one of them. All weird and wonderful yeah, yeah. patterns going on. I played it in Glasgow <laughs> in, a, in a guitar shop with a friend of mine. He played it a lot better, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I think I played it. I know he did, and it sounded all right. Well, I, th <laughs> you, I seem so to you think just sort of slapped it a few times. And, <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, it can make a plank of wood sound all right, which it is technically a plank of wood. Well, yeah, that went for one point seven million dollars today, wow. which is round about is it one point one million pounds? Who's I selling it? Is think. he selling it personally, or no? He's, he always does it to raise cash for that. Yeah, that I think he's got, I'm uh, going to uh, say I think it's, rehabilitation it, it's for a charity thing, isn't it? Isn't yeah. it for, That's what Crossroads is all about. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, isn't yeah. it for? Um, drugs and alcohol. Drugs and alcohol. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I saw a clip of it. I think I thing. might take it up actually. Guitar. What, what drugs? No, and drugs and alcohol. Drugs and alcohol. If you join Clapton's Get Well, you get sent off to Bahamas. You get lap of luxury paddling about on be A night we all meet. You meet. You know. <laughs> you meet all these celebrities. I think we've just got a window into our fantasy there. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try me, try and get me way in through. Well, here's the start, anyway. Yeah. I saw a clip today, and I've seen it before. <clears throat> you probably all have seen it, and it's um, it's a clip where the Queen is being introduced to. Do you know she walks down the corridor, and there's like famous people that she's introduced to. Yeah. Well, these are musicians, 
and I think Brian May had just done oh, that thing at right. top, top of yeah. the roof where he's Jubilee or whatever he starts playing National Anthem at top of the roof. And uh, she walks into this room and Brian May is there. He's almost like the uh, the introducer to the rest of the other guitarists. And you can tell it's a few years ago because he's got dark hair. Oh, um, it's an old one then? Yeah, yeah. It's the, in fact, all mentioned have got dark hair. I mean, they've probably dyed it, but still they've got dark hair. Um, and, he's, and he says, it, it was me making all that noise on your roof. <laughs> like, oh, sure, was it? Uh, poor impression. Yeah. Um, and then he says, oh, and this is another guitar player. This is uh, Jimmy Page. And Jimmy Page is like, like you know, yeah. they're all they all suddenly turn into little boys. Like hi, yeah, and and like uh, Brian May suddenly has to like he feel you can tell he's sort of leading it because he he says he, he has to say oh well Jimmy Page is really a big inspiration for me almost to say like like he's he's a really good guitar player you know it's his big inspiration for me uh, as as well you know Lizzie and then next to <laughs> is Eric Clapton. Oh, right. and she's like, oh, you play guitar as well, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, Chef Beck. But I bet she like. I bet the likes of Clapton and people are just like that, almost anonymity. I, I, uh, you know, oh, she doesn't know I'm... I'm yeah, maybe. You know. But then again, he's seen Queen, so it's, it's a funny one, isn't it? Yeah, I, I guess it sort of just sort of takes you back down to zero again, doesn't it? Yeah. For a moment yeah. while you're meeting the Queen. You do what? <laughs> you play guitar. <laughs> guitar? Oof. Is that uh, an acoustic or? Like, oh, right, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, it, so that was, it was weird seeing them all like little boys. What year was this? Do you know? Um, I'm going to say like 2002. Something like when, that. when they did the anniversary thing on Top of the Roof, is that, well, that 2002? The anniversary thing? Was it like so Golden Jubilee? Or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Where, yeah, he played. <laughs> right. Let's land them, didn't he? It must have been that mm. for them all to be there because obviously Beck's dead now, isn't he? Is he? <laughs> God damn. Strangely Spoiler enough. Spoiler alert, everyone, if you're watching this. <laughs> if you what? <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. yeah. If you didn't know. Also, uh, Bruce Willis is a ghost <laughs> in Sixth Sense. Really? Not, not now. <laughs> Can't talk about that. <laughs> Moving on. Yes, uh, guess quick, who's quickly. dropped a new album? Ooh. Um, Andre 3000 is back Really? And, yeah, Andre 3000 Formerly from the, the group Outcast Is back with a new album Now everyone was expecting him to come back with some sort of rap thing And, and stuff like that But he's been really quiet on the scene He's sort of like in a, being, a, being in a bit of a uh, therapeutic mode Where he's just avoided anything to do with celebrity And he's back with a new album But this album comes with a warning on the sleeve It says warning, no beats No beats? No beats as in there's no rhymes. There's, he's not rapping on there. Okay. So this album is is him playing um, wind instruments. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because he's often seen around New York or whatever, just walking around playing like the clarinet or whatever like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and apparently is 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 released music before, but under a different name because he just wanted to like get music out there. But he's done an album. And it's all wind instrument, and there's some which I, I didn't even know existed. And apparently, he didn't know it existed until he started to do this album. There are some digital wind instruments, R- yeah, which is interesting. Digital, uh, digital wind. How, how does that work? I was about what, to say, I, how does that work? I imagine it's like you're blowing something, <laughs> and it creates a sound. It's like it's not. I guess it's no different. It's like oh. you're pressing something, and it's like oh, I, it might be that thing that that police officer asked me to blow it the other week. <laughs> These chips were up. Yay. Yay. <laughs> yeah, so it is released music and it's just purely, um, well, it's, it's a wind instrument. Well, but yeah. something what was quite interesting, because he's doing the rounds of like interviews and stuff and he's talking about like how he just wants to do music that he feels genuine to him and everyone's expecting him to do rap, but that's not what he wants to do. Yeah. So he doesn't want to feel like a slave to what he's expected to do. Um, but he was saying, you know, that some of his, his friends – they they think they have an idea of what's going to work for him. And when they released the song Hey Ya, which is arguably their biggest hit, mm-hmm. yeah. it, one of his friends said, you know, if you release that song, that's going to be the end of your career. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's that, just, how it, many times has that happened, though? Yeah. yeah. So, it happens regularly where people have said, nah, I'm not sure about that one. It's going to be the biggest single that they've had. Well, look, Boy I mean Rhapsody will want it. Record yeah. company didn't want to do it. It's a, way of it's time. A, if, way, if you listen to it now, way it's, too it's, long. It's still 
Yeah, it's way we're too long. We're up to three minutes song. No, nobody be, nobody it, would be interested in that. We're way too forward. And there's no so. chorus, is there? No. No, 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 no. There's no repeating chorus, is no. there? No. 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 Yeah. We're all trying to run it through his head now, aren't we? Yeah. Scarlet Mush, Little Fandango. I mean, the words. You, you, if you looked at it, you thought, you, you can understand their point of view. It's very long. It's got all this talk of Beelzebub and Fandango, and you think to yourself, really? You honestly think this is going to be a hit? Well, this this unknowingly leads me on to a question that I, I, um, I've been thinking about this week. Can I just draw you back a minute? Sorry. Because you were talking about wind instruments. Mm-hmm. Wayne. <laughs> and Sorry. I found a particular piece of music that I, I'm really liking. Or an artist that I'm really liking. And it, it's completely different in a sense that it's not what... I like a bit of orchestral stuff. I like a bit of classical stuff. I like a bit of everything. But this is... She's a flutist, a flautist. Uh, she uh-huh. plays flute. But this is a particular flute. It looks like she's playing part of a central eating system. And, but or is it, she a, a radioist? It's, it's, <laughs> but it's a radiator. But it, it's... Such beautiful music! It's a beautiful sound that she makes from this flute. It's what it's it's called a low flute, I think, and it's such a big thing, and it sounds like a blue whale blowing on a milk bottle top. Yeah, it sounds. Ooh. It's a beautiful sound. It's brilliant. I love it. And she's done this. She's done it. She's quite famous for doing this. She's brought out several albums. But I've recently got a track, and I'm going to tell you what the track is called: Heart Weaving. Heart weaving, and her name is Daniela Mars. Can I try and give us a little sample? Do you, would you like me to? Have you connected to the Bluetooth? Oh, um, no, I haven't really. I didn't think uh, we were allowed to anymore. Well, you can show a little clip, but not like when you want to play a verse and you make us wait for the solo, oh, well, and then we're okay. two minutes deep, and then we and get then, restricted. And then next track comes on. <laughs> oh, but you're going to like the outro on this, actually. It's nice. Yeah. Well... Okay, I don't want to play too much of it because it's uh, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but it certainly is mine. I really do like it. Uh, it's taking its time worrying. No. Oh. Technical difficulties. But it does, and she's playing along with it. No. No. Oh, well. She's playing along with a pianist, but it's it sounds like, it sounds like a blue whale that's having a conversation Fit. with a pia- pianist. <laughs> I know it sounds yeah. difficult. Just go and listen to it. Just go and listen to it. It's great. It really is. It's something that you've not heard before, I think. Most majority of people have never heard before. It's a very low sound. Give us an, a, an impression. No. Oh, come on. Do it. No. <laughs> there you go. You've got it. There you go. That one more like Chewy off a Star Wars. <laughs> Why is this not connected? I don't know. Uh, yeah, you can show me it, but I don't know. No, I'm, I'm getting uh, nearer to no, the... No, uh, it shouldn't work. Uh... Oh, it's connected now. Oh, is it? Yeah, there it's we connected go. now. It's because I needed to point it at it. All right. Here comes Moby Dick. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought that was it then. Is that that it? was it. <laughs> Ladies' lingerie, second floor. <laughs> Flowers and ornaments, third floor. <laughs> Isn't that a great sound? <laughs> Sphincter cleaning, fourth floor. <laughs> I just sorry. I just like. Oh, I'm not going to apologise for it. I, I do like that. So, it's it's nice. It's it's one of those songs you'd play after you've just killed someone and you fall back in your armchair and you're brooding about it. Uh, no. Should I? Shouldn't I? No. It's like sitting on your new decking with a glass of wine or a large gin tonic in your hand, watching you, the world burn, watching the world <laughs> go down. Yeah, it's nice. It sounds like it belongs on. Uh, one of David Attenborough's programs, yeah, of a squirrel coming out of a hibernation. Do they hibernate? There you go. <laughs> with this note, thank you for indulging me. <laughs> it comes out with a coconut. <laughs> no, it's nice. It's very smooth. Look I, I only spoke over it just to uh, distract from copyright. Yeah, well, you know, I, I get, I get that, I get that. But um, I don't start playing albums. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'd like to play the Beatles. <laughs> Best of. No. no. We are, if I make this comment now, we're about three weeks too late. Three oh. weeks too late. Who could that be? Oh, two. 
<laughs> Telling me to stop playing that music. Stop playing I mean, that music. You, you could just put it on silent. I could do. There we go. <laughs> and, but we were talking the other week about Beatles and the Stones releasing the new material. And we'd like to be current on here, but we don't always go out at the same time. I had a conversation with Louis after we'd recorded that particular show when I said I'd not listened to it. And I thought, I was confused what production they'd gone for, whether they'd gone for, whether they were trying to go for an old production level or a modern day production level. And they seemed to have gone for a modern day one. But their bio, their official biographer, somebody took better than I would, I could have. He says it sounds like ELO, and it does. Sounds like ELO. Mm, it does. I but it, apparently, Jeff Lynn has got a hand in it. Well, yeah, because <clears throat> in the nineties, he was the one that got them all together. So, right. and, so that's why there's Jeff Lynn in there. But that I that's not a bad thing. Yeah. It's just I would have preferred it to have a seventies quality around it. But it's not. Seven to song, isn't it? It's been edit, it's been produced. Paul's played on it in current day. I think it, I think it's a perfect trifle. No, I disagree. Oh, well, yeah, but it's fine. I think I just think it's a trifle of different decades, and yeah. you shouldn't try and make it sound like the seventies when only an element of it is from the seventies. I, I would have been I would have been quite happy if they'd gone mono on it and just did it in analog. Yeah, but there's George Harrison playing on it in the nineties, and that yeah, was. But why not? Give it that. I think it would have been a bit better than sounding like yellow. I don't know. I I liked it. I like it, but it's not... It's going to make it really awkward when Paul McCartney walks in here next week. <laughs> well, actually... <laughs> oh, it's a bit different from what they've used, what they've done previously, isn't it? Yeah. It's a lot different. It feels more yeah. produced. Yeah. yeah. Which you should expect, because, you know, it's been... Modern day. Yeah, it's been a long... been a few years. So, back to my little thing about what oh, I've been so thinking about, my question. Your question. Do lyrics matter in a song? Are lyrics ma- are, are lyrics important, or is it the melody? Well, I've just pe- played your piece of music. Then I think that answers your question. Well, there are no lyrics in that one, but I mean, with a song that has lyrics, the, uh, so no. So no, I th- we've we've spoke about this before that I you 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 pick up the certain songs where you will know the lyrics and you sing along and because they the catch your ear and they the mean something to you, 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 you put some meaning behind it that's yours. And there's other songs that just have a melody about them and it's it can be nonsense. It can be white shade of pale. And it and it's, the words don't really mean that much, but it's because it's got a rhythm and it's got a beat and it's got a, it's got a ebb and flow to it you just like it but when the lyrics actually hit something and they and you can sort of tangibly turn a narrative into them they they elevate it to a, an, an extra level but th- that extra level isn't needed to enjoy it have you got an example no no i mean you could pick any david bowie songs to be fair um but so for, actually with, with david bowie what i mean half of the time he doesn't know what the songs are about anyway but what you can do like Let's say when you look at like an abstract painting, you can decipher your own interpretation of it. Yeah. So, you, like as humans, you like to find patterns and you like to find a, a, like a a meaning to things. Yeah. Um, and I think that happens when lyrics are really vague. Like I've mentioned here before, there's like a tendency at the moment uh, w- uh, with modern music to over-explain things. That the, the very um, diary type they over-explain and and take you through a linear path of the song, which I find a bit tedious and a bit boring um so i would say i agree that they don't matter but at the same hand they do matter but if yeah. i had to choose i'd rather yeah. not matter. There's, there's certain songs by so we said just for argument's sake bob dylan that i really like certain lines in certain in, in his songs just hit home yeah and there's certain lines in his songs that it's just more of a rhythm than a than a meaning. Yeah. I once watched a video about how to write a song like Bob Dylan lyrically, and a lot of it was rhythm. They were, they, they were, they were at this, I can't remember how they did it now, but they, he uses apparently there's a, there's a few rhythm phrases that he uses quite a lot in his lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I can't give you an example, but I know they're out there. I think on that question, the last one, the last episode or the episode before when we were discussing the Rolling Stones' new album. Yeah. And we both said that 
it wasn't up to scratch because it was lyrically poor. Yeah, and I've listened to it, yeah. and I agree with you. I think it's a little bit cliche, isn't it? So, on Some that respect, lyrics. lyrics matter. Well, yeah, I, I can, that's what, it's a, it's a very tight, yeah. it's, a, it's a close line. But I think the problem with with that is that there, there seem to be a lot of cliches which sort of spike out the song and they sort of they feel jarring. And I think that some of the, the rhyming patterns as well were quite obvious. Yeah, I think um, it. All, I yeah. think it all depends on the artist. Yeah, and who you're listening to. Yeah, yeah it does. It if, does. Like you've mentioned, Bowie, and you know, it could, could be out. But then you get so out and John, and he tells a story, and he's very, he's very lyrically brilliant. You're becoming a big fan, Elton, aren't you? No, not a big fan. <laughs> but like I said before, I like some of his stuff. I just. It's just not for me to happy stuff. Well, but his but his songs tell stories and they're very well written lyrically. Like we were just talking then about Bohemian Rhapsody. It's what does it mean? Nobody really knows. But there's a lot of melodies oh, and you, you read what you want into that one, don't you? They've yeah. done a scientific research into the meanings of Lots of people with Rhapsody. lab coats have stood around it and hmm. Um, one of them where they go, Scaramouche, Scaramouche, that's something that's I think that was something like holy, and then yeah, uh, all then, these phrases are well known. Yeah, then something else is uh, it uh, resembles the devil. Beelzebub, is that the devil? Yeah, yeah. one and then part the, of it refers to the middle page of Argos. And the, <laughs> um, <laughs> I often thought, but you you only look back when you know. What you know at the time, I, I look back at it and I think it that was like um, a confession to his his sexuality at times. Some of the things Possibly. he said, but he did that quite a few times in his songs. Not a confession. It it, it were like he'd be saying things within his songs that uh, I just killed a man. I think he was saying I've got rid of that man, and this is me. Yeah, could I think be. He was saying stuff like that. So when you were saying, "I want to break free," yeah, what do you think he was talking about? He wants to come out. <laughs> yeah, it's really, I think, think he did it, it a lot. You think it was trap wind? I think could he be. did it a lot. But you can interpret it in your own context. You can do with it what you will. Once it's put out there, you can do with it what you will. Yeah. yeah. We, I mean, we touched on one, didn't we? Other day, other episode. Yeah. You two's one. Yeah. We none of us knew the what they'd wrote it about. But it made perfect sense once we knew. Yeah. Yeah. If you didn't know, it's about a man talking to his father and the, the man, the son, is a gay man and explaining to his father that he's dying of AIDS. Now, when you know that, it takes a different light on, but it makes perfect sense. But your interpretation of it originally before you knew that might be... Hmm. Well, I didn't get that one, but it's, it works. But so, I, I read it like this. So then lyrics And that's it, how Edge and Bono wrote it. Well, they can add an extra level yeah. of, of importance. Funnily enough, uh, last night I went to Wentworth Woodhouse to listen to a, a lecture about the connections between um, 18th century literature and uh, Gothic architecture. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's actually quite interesting. Yeah. Right. Uh, but they were talking about the, the Gothic... i got time for that. The Gothic... <laughs> Wayne's not got time for that. He's not got, got time for Gothic architecture. <laughs> but they were talking about the Gothic period or the Gothic style as basically the summarising of it was an, an abandoned, um, a, a, the people abandoning the religious stereotypes. Yeah. And then when you know all this, it's like, yeah. oh, all these things connect together and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They, they all broke. Did you go willingly? R Rococo. I paid money to go there. And I got, really? I, I got a drink on arrival, a cup of tea and a biscuit. Digestive, you get that when you get blood. Yeah. Chocolate obnob. In fact, actually, that was a man with big pointed teeth. <laughs> Chocolate obnob. It was a coconut biscuit. Oh, all right, not what. Yeah, all right. but was it interesting? It was very interesting. Good. Yeah, there was a few moments where I had flared nostrils, though. You know, I was just like you know trying not to laugh. Like, no, yawn. <laughs> oh yeah. right. It, the, 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 it was very good, but um, some parts of it I was struggling to tie ends together. How long was it? An hour. So for about, what, 58 minutes? <laughs> 58 minutes. <laughs> Struggling. <laughs> <Refreshing> <laughs> <it on. laughs> 
No, it was good to have a minute to get in, two minutes to get and a minute to get out. That was fine. But it was interesting how you suddenly learn something and then it ties these things in. <coughs> like you would, yeah. But I, I, don't I would have found that interesting anyway because I do like architecture because it ties in with the artistic streak in me. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, but I, I do think lyrics are very important. Really? Yeah, I do, yeah. 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 Are, are they essential? Well, you don't yes. like music without it, do you? No, I'm not. No, I like I like a story. I like something happening. Something happening. In, oh, I, I ain't got time for that. I mean, I only, I mean, I always listen to the music side of it first, the drums and guitar, and I listen to that first, and then after a couple of times, I'll, I'll listen to the lyric side of it and what story they're telling, and like you said, try to in, interpret my view or my interpretation of what they're saying or what the meaning or something like that. Like Wish You Were Here. So, I mean, that's sure. a great song. Yeah. So it's a great story. Doodle doom doom. That's not the lyrics, but yep. <laughs> doom doom doodle doom. Oh, Roger Walsh is going to be trying to claim copyright in that. <laughs> <laughs> He's sat there near now rubbing well, his hands. No, I, I don't think he'd come up with that though, does he? Oh no, he probably would argue he did. He probably would yeah. argue about anything. Maybe like, I was in the room and I hummed this, this pattern and uh, yeah. David just, just stole it from me. Yeah, he probably would. So, any other news of this week? Anything else gone down? I uh, see Lemmy is having a statue built of him at Stoke on Trent, I believe. At Stoke on Trent? Mm. All right. I know there's a statue really? of him in the Rainbow yeah. Bar, isn't it's there? Got, yeah, it's going outside Rainbow Bar. Yeah, they have one in uh, Stoke on Trent. So, tell us more. What's, when's this going up? Do we know? Uh, they are hoping to start it. Uh, beginning of next year, I believe they said. Good. And uh, yeah. it's a strange one, until Emmy. They haven't had permission where to put it yet. Wow. There's two or three sites that they'd like to put it on, but nothing's yeah. been confirmed of where it will actually be. Uh, uh, yeah, we're not. It was his birthplace, but he didn't spend much time there. No. It'll probably be, I don't know. Was it, is. Would, what would you do with it? Would you put it in town centre? Would you put it in a park? I think that's their feeble attempt to try and get Stoke on the map musically because they've already got Possibly. Robbie Williams. Slash. And Slash. Yeah, I get that, but a blue plaque would have sufficed because he spent most of his time on Anglesey, didn't he, as a youth? And then he moved to Manchester. On a chair. On a chair? Blue, blue plaque on a chair in park. Oh, right. You, I, I was just saying, you got me there. Yeah. <laughs> On a chair. Yeah, but it was uh, it was really annoyed, Lemmy. Back in the day, uh, excuse me for flicking through my notes. Have you got, you've got notes prepared for such a, of, a, of an occasion when Lemmy pops up? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. So you just you just going you just, for a read. You just yeah, read. So yeah. while you're going for a read, I'm going to tell you about another little bit of uh, news that's popped out this week. Yeah. Sorry. Go bon on. Jovi are releasing a Christmas song. Is it, yeah. I saw and that, it, yeah. I think it comes out today, which what, will be is, Friday is it, the seventeenth. Bon Jovi. Or is it, or no, is it not John Bon Jovi. Uh, actual Bon Jovi. Okay. They all back together. Well, I don't know. It's they are for this Christmas, but, man. But the title of this song is called. It ain't Christmas or Christmas ain't Christmas or something like that. Christmas ain't Christmas. Christmas ain't Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Wow, wow. Christmas ain't Christmas. Be out. Richie. Boom, boom. Well, is Richie there? I don't know. Oh. But Bon Jovi is there. Yeah, looking like a a governor from. I'm going to say, Idaho. yeah, he looks like someone that's running for president now, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Well, he can't help that, can he? It's his face. <laughs> Yeah, but his hairdo has got that strange, almost like a bit of Trump quiff thing going on. I, mean, well, I, I don't, like I don't want him you. to have his big head of hair like his mane, like what? he had when. Yeah. Well, no, because it would look ridiculous. Oh, but, would you like a little, a little teaser listen of oh, this? Oh, if, if you've got it, yeah, yeah, hit us with it. I can't wait for this fucking Christmas song in November. Yeah, it's all right. That anyway, what we were saying is. <laughs> It's already a bit fancy. Pretty ribbons, wrap each present that is new. Yeah, that's uh, that's a bang of that one. Do you yeah. know what that sounds like? Uh, straight away, to me, that mm. just took me back uh, quite a few years to early seventies, and it sounded like Alvin Stardust. <laughs> it did. 
Wow. Does anybody out there remember Alvin Stardust? You will do if you're you okay. Um, he used to have one glove. Before Michael Jackson started Jackson. with his one glove trick. Were he a golfer? No. And he used to wear all black leather. Mm. And he got the hair, he got the Elvis shuffle, and he got this one. Oh, right. Just, it were all right for the time, but that sounds like Alvin Stardust. When you think of um, rock Christmas songs, you tend to think of 70s, though, don't you? Glam rock. Well, that's when they were big. Yeah. That is where. Well, that is when they were big. They were popular. Um, it doesn't sound amazing, does it? No. No, no it doesn't. But to be fair, but it's it a could Christmas, have done a really good song. It's a Christmas it, song. It's not going to be instantly amazing. Instantly we dismiss it. I don't know. On Christmas, Merry, you, uh, Slade, me, Merry Christmas, 50, uh, 50 me, year old. Sorry? Said, not me. I said on Christmas songs, uh, Slade's Merry Christmas is 50 year old this year. Is it 50 I believe. Year this year? Yeah. 50 year old, yeah. And it still makes the most money out of all Christmas songs that were released. What, more than Mariah Carey? More I'd, than Mariah Carey. Yeah. I doubt I, it. It does. Yeah, yeah, it really I, does, yeah. Uh, I yeah. would have thought that. It, oh, it's, it's, it's not a guess that. It's true. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's true that, yeah. <laughs> they, they did a comparison between Mariah Carey, Slade, and George Michael's Christmas song. and Last Christmas. Yeah, them two were getting something like £350,000 each year. Slade, how get, can you live on that? You can't live on that. Yeah. No, I won't go out of bed. Slade were getting something they couldn't nail it down, but a, a, a conservative estimate between seven hundred and fifty thousand and a million every year. I wonder if they they must have owned the rights wow. to it now as well. Well, he does. Yeah, he wrote it. Yeah, but no, but that doesn't mean he's how he owns the rights of it. Oh, well, no. So if he owns, he, he, he may own the music. Well, he must do it again if he's getting that amount, that wedge. But when you think about it, look, Christmas, it's on everything, isn't it? Well, the thing is, it's it on gets radios, put, every it's on shops, every, every it's Christmas on it gets put on that, it? it's on every, everything to do with Christmas. It's somewhere it's has got that song. to go in supermarkets and everywhere else. That's why it earns so much money. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's made him a good living. And still, like, still, still does. Yeah. <laughs> he's not been well, though, has he? Is he not? No, he's not been well. He, he had this... Can't scare, and things were looking good, but it, it, it might have reappeared. All right. I don't want to get my facts wrong about that because it's not. To, but I think is, I don't. I think he's not mend again, but he is an, an elderly gentleman these days. Mm -hmm. So you know, Speak. all the best, Noddy. Well, if that song's fifty year old, what age will he have been when he did it? Twenty six. You weren't yeah, that old. Mid he mid, just looked mid, old. Mid twenties. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they weren't that. They weren't so that old. He's, he's, in that respect, he's going to be pushing me, seventy-eight, eighty. Let isn't me he? throw this one at you. <laughs> All the Beatles were under thirty when they split up. Yeah, mm. that takes some getting your head around that. Yeah. I think. Yeah, but they weren't together long, were they? No, like seven years or something like that. No, they started sixty-three with the first release, and mm. they finished in 70. 70, 71. Seven years. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, so anyway, getting back to Lemmy. No, no, somebody else who uh, is is of a, an age of vulnerability, and who's bringing out new music, and who has also had some health issues. Who's that? Tony Christie. Oh yeah, he's got. Dementia. He's back. He's got. He's he's got signs of dementia, but he's back with a new album. The first, or his first new material in sixteen years. The wait is over, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, woohoo! Tony is back. I can't wait. Yeah, he was always one of my dad's favourites. Eight year old. Yeah, I used to do all local clubs around here. Yeah, quite popular around here. Yeah, quite popular everywhere. Well, you know, <sighs> Mars is not so big, but no. <laughs> Asbestos were big at some point, weren't it? <laughs> Rickets were good. <laughs> Rickets were very popular at one time. <laughs> when? <laughs> he used to be popular. <laughs> at one time. <laughs> All right, can I go back to your lemmy thing now? Go you back can. to lemmy, yeah, yeah. Do it. Sorry, but you, you, you drifted off to your notes. So. I know, I know. It just, it, you know, when things come up, I, I have to sort of... Go back to your notes. Go back to my notes. <laughs> Yo, yeah, lemmy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sharon Osborne gets in touch with lemmy and says... First of all, let me just say that he, he was really annoyed about the outcome. And I'll explain in a minute. Lemmy didn't have a fountain, did he? 
A fountain? Yeah. Why? I was just wondering. Sharon Osborne involved. I didn't know if she was going to throw a wee up. You'll have to listen to the previous episode. Caesar! <laughs> um. <laughs> You've put me right off now. Let me. I've just got a vision in my head. And it's not healthy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sharon says to Lemmy, Lemmy, uh, Oz is bringing out a new album. Would you write two or three songs for him? And he says, yeah, of course I will. Yeah, no problem. So he writes six, of which four were chosen and appeared on the album. All right. And one of them was... <laughs> Queen uh, of Hearts. Sorry? Queen of Hearts? No. I'm just thinking Ace of Spades. What else is he right? No. I never understood the appeal, but no. No, <laughs> no it is Desire, Hellraiser, and I don't want to I don't want to change the world. What's that? I don't want to change the world. Hellraiser and Desire. There were three that made it onto the album. Not four, three. Three. But Hellraiser was a single, I believe, and that got him a Grammy. Oh, it got it. Well, it got Ozzy a Grammy, or did it get? It got Lemmy a Grammy for right. That was the song of the year. Yeah. Oh, it was the album of the year, and because he got the writing credits on them songs, he got a Grammy with it. And he also made a bucket load of money out of it. But he didn't never. He made more money out of that one album that Ozzy did than he did about all Motorhead songs, all Motorhead albums, and it annoyed L out of him. Yeah, it's a bit of a uh, yeah. a backhanded yeah. compliment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But mind you, that Ozzy w- was more popular than than him. Yeah, they were never that big, real in sales wise. Mm. But they got this following and they got this cult status, and everybody loves Lemmy, don't they? You know, it's like Ozzy. Everybody loves Ozzy, but you know, not all everybody loves his music. Mm. It just got a personality. I, I'd like to watch... Music needs these... But like It's like Keith Richards. Yeah. yeah, you need these characters, you need these people that make it interesting because music, it's not all about the music. Oh. We like music because it's got... It comes with a story. It's the stories that are sometimes more interesting. Like, we, we don't necessarily all like the Beatles, but we love the backstory. The backstory is brilliant. Oh. It, Never stops giving that that story about the Beatles. There's always something coming up about it. Different angles. People have said this. It's great. It's great. There's always a story, and they're always interesting. Yeah, they're like Greek mythologies, aren't they? They 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 get reinterpreted through the years. No. Yeah, yeah exactly like Greek mythology. <laughs> they don't get reinterpreted. They are what they are, aren't they? Well, no, because you give given enough time, the, the, the either the, the party gets exaggerated, the amount of drugs are exaggerated. Oh, right, yeah. That the, happens with everybody. Yeah, it, it, just yeah. Like, well, like things become legend, don't Chinese they? whispers. Chinese yeah. whispers. That's the one. Yeah, if, if, if some of the bands claimed to have done what they've done, they wouldn't be alive. Yeah. It just helps... Give it it helps, right. it helps, I don't yeah. know. Ozzy's not doing bad. <laughs> no, he's doing all right. But you, you... well, you say that he's not going to tour anymore. No, he's no. not. He's got blood clots, I think. Yeah, yeah. He's, I mean, he, he had a, a drink issue and he, he he couldn't get clean. But there's there's lords like that. Mm. There's lords like that, and they've all gone through rehab, and some have made it, and some haven't. Numerous times. Yeah, yeah. It's the the. The music industry is is littered with casualties. Speaking of casualties, <clears throat> Bill Gates. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not a casualty. But I, I found something out this uh, this week. Bill Gates has a podcast. Is he really? Yeah, a video podcast, and it's called Unconfuse Me. And it's a very like set stage where they've got like. Easy chairs, like modern style easy chairs. It looks like they found an easy corner of IKEA <laughs> and like set up a conversation, right? Yeah. There's some like Elvis mics, but they're nowhere near the mouth, so I don't know how they're recording them. Um, so, so it's just for appearance sake, aren't we? I suspect so. But yeah. the, uh, this particular episode, I was to- uh, I was watching. He was talking about um, that AI have more surprises involved. Anyway, that's by the by. It's by quite the an- by. Quite an interesting episode, but what caught my attention is that amongst the the bits in the set, what made it like a cozy environment, like a side table, they've got a main table in the middle where there's like a record player, 
and there's a little box with uh, vinyls on. And at the front of this box of all these little vinyls, you've got What's Going On by Marvin, Marvin Gaye, which is like, okay, I can imagine Bill Gates maybe listening to Marvin Gaye. It's probably from his era, right? But the, there was one album that was turned upside down from the camera, um, which was placed to suggest that it's been played or it had been played on the record player, all right? Do you know what that album could be or which artist it would be? Do you know? I know. Okay, I'm going to go with Metallica. What are you going to go for? Metallica, the Black Album. Yeah, okay. When? I want to go, never mind the bollocks, here's the Sex Pistols. Oh, good good options. But it was Jamiroquai. Oh. What? I don't think Bill Gates listens to Jamiroquai. No, I don't either. Why? He might do. I mean, he might, yeah, he could be full of surprises. I think I remember an episode where he was on BBC 4's Desert Island Discs, and he might have chose Jimi Hendrix. You see, you never know, yeah, though, yeah, do with yeah. these people, whether they're trying to be cool or whether that's genuine. I don't know. I mean, Bill Gates has got enough money, he doesn't need, need to try to be cool, does he? Yeah, they do. They, they, do. they do. Image. Image. Look Bill Gates, him. image. Look, yeah. Have you seen him? Look yeah, at but Facebook, if, man. He tries to be yeah, cool, but, as, but he's not. He's not pulling it off. Do you know what Bill Gates' favourite meal is? Uh, bangers and mash. It. It's a hamburger. Yeah. And he, he likes it from McDonald's. <laughs> and oh, he's, he's got a problem with Coca-Cola. He has stores of, of Coca-Cola. He loves Coca-Cola. Diet Coke, guys. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, we know somebody else like that, but... Do we? Yeah, Bonamassa. Joe? Yeah. Joe. Oh, he loves oh, Coca-Cola, is it? Oh, yeah. So that's just not Coke? No. <laughs> Definitely Coca-Cola. I think he's on about... Eight cans a day. Eight cans a day, last time he counted. <laughs> Not through his bins. Yeah. Last time I was, I was rummaging, <laughs> rummaging through his trash can. Come down, come down. Trash come can? Down. Well, Take that back. Well, that's what they call it, isn't I it? I don't care what they call it. You're not from over there. No, but they, they, they won't know. <laughs> I'm not taking it back. <laughs> they won't know what a bin is. No. It's a rubbish bin. Rubbish. It's a bin. It's a bin. Put it in bin. It's a wheelie bin. Where's your bin? I've really been in... I'd have loved to be the person that invented wheels and uh, on, uh, wheels on a bin. That is not invented wheels because that'd be quite old. But you know, such a simple thing, wheels on a bin. <laughs> it's good in it. Oh, it's, it's good. So I, another bit of um, controversial and alarming news this week. Ooh, on them. I think it was actually yesterday. What legend of the smoking world of the the, the ganja leaf? I decided enough is enough. Snoop Doggy. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, he released a statement. I'm going to read the statement to you. Yeah. Actually, I thought that he'd done that before. <sighs> when he turned to being a lion. No, what, a lion? <laughs> Not Jamaican lion? Jamaica? Yeah. They love it. I thought he'd just get up with the weed. No. 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 Oh, so Snoop Dogg is Allegedly. giving up. The title is Snoop Dogg is giving up smoke. So that's when you know you're cool because you don't call it weed. You just call it smoke. And then here we go. Here's a quote. After much consideration and conversation with my family, I've decided to give up smoke. Nah. Sounds like chat GPT to me. Sounds like somebody said, you pack that in or else. Yeah, I bet he's got weak lungs. Yeah, something's happened there. Something's happened. Uh, he's, he's, he's had a chat with his family. His family's had a chat with him. Yeah. Yeah, because he was... Uh... Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, I'm, I don't know whether I like. I'm not making any difference whether I like him or not. But he's one of these characters again, isn't he? So I'm sorry, I'm distracted by one of my notes. I've I've wrote here autism's back after after 16 years. I don't know what that means. Ooh. So it's obviously a typo. But what could it mean? I can't remember. Yeah, so Bon Jovi, not Bon Jovi. Uh, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Didn't he do that Just Eat advert or something? Yeah, what, he did. Well, yeah. that is he still does it. Yeah. No, it's somebody else now. No, Katie, Katie Perry and uh, no. Snoop Dogg did it. Oh, right, yeah. Now it's, is it Leto, oh, Lato, know. something like that, and Christine Aguilera. Okay. Well, they make a lot of money out of it, don't they? I don't know. And do you know for the reason why? To get free service? I'll tell you. So one of the reasons why they make a lot of money out of it is because in the deal, their voice gets translated into pretty much every every language there is. Okay. So Snoop Dogg will go, for shizzle, I like hamburgers. And then that'll go in his accent, konnichiwa, hui, whatever it is. <laughs> and it'll rap in the someone else's voice. It, right, it's, it'll rap yeah. in someone else's language, but in his voice. Yeah. So they get co- they get credit for singing, but they get to copyright their own voice because of the technology that's involved. So it goes Spanish, Italian, French, everywhere. 
Well, I know that. Uh, I've got time for that, have you? No. Yeah. That, it's like, I, I, I think her name is something like Lato. I've never heard of her, but the, uh, she's like doing the main songy bit. And then Christine Aguilera. Oh, Demi is, Lovato. Is it Lovato? Is it Lovato? It could be. Not Lizzo, is it? No, it's not Lizzo, no. And then Christine Aguilera is like kind of a backing singer, Ooh. but not backing singer. Yeah. But she's doing opera. Wow, right. what a voice oh, she she's has, got. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Have a look out for that. We'll just listen to Christine Aguilera doing opera. Makes you want to order chicken. It does. <laughs> While listening to Pavarotti. Pavarotti. <laughs> no, it no, is. She she's absolutely yeah. brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. I had to laugh this week when I heard your comments about, um, oh, God, my memory. Um, Lady Gaga. Me, me, yeah, me dress. <laughs> me dress. That's how you referred me to her last time. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't remember. I have to refer to <laughs> that's, that's, really, that's really doing a good job at sticking your memory, that the old meat dress. Um, meat dress works. Her name doesn't. No. Lady Gaga, and you and you, and you say, why does she mess about with with that pop music? Which she's got a brilliant voice like that. Mm. Why does she mess? About, why does she mess why around with the face? Why does she mess about with that? Take that beard off him, will you? He's slamming <laughs> it down on the table. It on he thinks he's Henry the <laughs> Eighth. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I just, and I laugh when I hear it every time now. Yeah. She just I thought, because, <laughs> and I think, well, I'm not going to explain it to you. I, I just don't get it. Just, you don't have to get it. It's just that she's made a very successful oh, career she out of singing yeah. what she, she wants has. to sing. Well, speaking of female I she, artists, I think she's wasted that. And, and singers. And uh, do you think she'd have made a better career singing ballads like Amiria Carey? Uh, Mir- 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 Carey. Miriri. Miriri. Yeah. Do you think that? I think she could do a lot better than aiming herself at teenagers with a pop music. I think Wendy. I think if she went to a bit more classic rocky type of stuff, we have uh, 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 What's uh, she uh, doing classic rock? Well they probably would, don't yeah. Think, I think you, that's just my preference. Don't because you think she could mature I, as years go on? Well, I hope she, she does. She could like move into different areas of music. Oh, hopefully she does. Apparently she's because, very difficult to work with though. Because with a voice like that, she's wasted. She's not wasted. She is. This to is a bit I, I don't understand. I think she is. I think it's because I don't like that commercialised pop stuff that she does. Oh. And I just think, you know... It makes a lot of money, though, doesn't it? Oh, it does. Oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't do that. And I'm not saying she's not very successful, because she is. And she's she's very um, successful. wealthy. But I just think, you know... Well, a, a very successful artist in a, I think, a, maybe a two-year period of the 80s, you may know her name as Bonnie Tyler... Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. someone I was always looking Rod, out for a hero. Rod Stewart in a dress. Rod Stewart in a dress. <laughs> Bonnie Tyler from Rod the Stewart Valleys. Rod come from Wales. Well, no, well, but well, he's, got, he's got that right deep, husky voice that but she's But you like got. gravelly voices. I do. She's back. She's, she's back. back. But not she? as you know it. She's back and she's advertising uh, Jaffa Cakes. <laughs> <laughs> so she <laughs> she's in an advert for Jaffa Cakes. There are other biscuits slash cakes available. But she's... She's they're doing a they're doing they're doing a tenuous link of a total eclipse of the heart to oh, yeah. the Jaffa cake is like she's like this is a full Jaffa cake and this is half of a Jaffa cake but this is a total eclipse of a Jaffa cake so it's very cheesy yeah and she's done like no, it's Jaffa cakes not cheese yeah. <laughs> uh, no she's done a few adverts before. Um, where she's, I think she's hovering over a car park selling some insurance. But, <laughs> please, but I, please, I think times are hard for old Bonnie. Well, yeah. She could do with a hero. She could do. She's not had a hit for quite some time. She's not likely to have a, any more hits with Big Ever Wolf again. Because he's gone. Ever again. She no. had a big fallout with Never the say never again. So the total, oh, ever again. The ever total again. Eclipse of the Heart video um, in the 80s, which was like massive, yeah? Yeah. There was a very famous director for music videos at the time who did loads of stuff MTV I think he did stuff with Duran Duran and he was like hot property um, and when working on that shoot legend has it that she fell out with him she thought she was like the bee's knees right yeah and she was like oh this is ridiculous blah 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 and she fell out with him I think there may have been some uh, 
sexuality slander. Ooh. Oh, nice. and Ooh. he was of that way inclined, and he, as it turns out, had more sway in the industry than she did, and people decided that they didn't want to work with her after that. Now, I'm not going to throw a word. I'm not going to say anyone's such and such. You know, it's been like, it's like 30 years ago, but I think she got a bit stroppish. A little bit of success can sometimes go to people's heads, shall we say. Yeah. Look at Wayne. Mm. Still waiting for it. Still waiting for it. <laughs> I've heard something great this week. And what it is, it re- it's, you, can, you can access this service if you wish, but it's mainly... It's focused for record shops, music shops, record shops. Do they still exist? Sorry? Do they still exist? Oh, okay, yeah, they do. We well, have a whole shops. sections oh, yeah. for yeah. vinyls. I thought they should, I thought they combust. Did okay. We lose a few mm. and there's still some there. Well, they've not gone away. They're still there. Yeah. There's not as many as there used to be. That's, HMV's that's, that's, not there, though, now, is it? You know the big one in Mid Roll? Oh, no. But that, I think there might be an HMV in London. Is there? Ah, yeah. yeah, and in New York. I think they've just sort of like... It's a long way to emph- walk, though, isn't it? Emphasized... Yeah. The, the, Online sales. Um, yeah. No? I don't know. No. I don't know. But the independent stores are still there, and some of them have been there for over 30 years, and they're still thriving. There's still a demand for vinyl. There's still a demand for CDs. There's still a demand for cassettes. Well, there's a growing demand for cassettes. You want to say that's on its way back into it? Yeah. It? But it's mainly you, you That's good. Mainly I like, I like vinyls. That idea. Mainly yep. vinyls. And I've been listening to a podcast about two record shop owners. One's in um the south of England and one's in Eastern Europe. They're both English. And he's just opened a shop in Eastern Europe and it's doing very well. It's a podcast between them both. Yeah. What do they call it? They call it I we it. buy records. Oh, really? Oh, because yeah. I'm going to say, I've, I've thought of a great name for them. What? Hard Press. No. We buy... <laughs> it's vinyl. We buy records, I think they call it. But it's... Uh, hold on, let me just talk... You put me off now. Sorry. Well, Hard Press No, is a better name. No, well, <laughs> tell, tell them that. <laughs> well, you can tell them that. Put it down on comments. <sighs> yeah, put it down on comments. No, it? So anyway, what, what, so what, what were they talking about? No, I've got to find the name of it now. All right. As soon as you interrupted me, well, why did mid the floor. why did the orange stop rolling down the hill? Sorry, because it got squashed. Because it ran out of juice. <laughs> Found it yet? No. There you go. We buy records. I'm sure they're called We Buy Records. We buy vinyls. Take that phone off him. Just put the phone down. <laughs> put <laughs> the phone down. <laughs> yeah. Put anyway, it down. and not as loud next uh, time. Enough. Stop no. it. Just okay. Oh, so. That's like my beer. <laughs> Back in the room. <laughs> We're off. Now. Sorry, the two the two record companies. Two record companies. Buy vinyls. Right. Southern, down south, one eastern. What were we point? What were we leading to? You'd been listening to it. Uh, yeah, yeah. listen to a podcast. Yeah, and you liked it. I do like it. And they were talking about oh the the resurgence of vinyls and cassettes, uh, streaming services. Uh, they're selling more vinyls these days. Um, no, it's gone. Carry on. That's yeah. Carry on. Carry on where? Yeah. <laughs> well, on that note. No. Oh, come it's, got it's, come it's got it. It's come back. It's come back. And what they've just done is one of them is just done. It's Serbia, I think, is in Serbia. And he says, "I got contacted by this uh, gentleman from Japan, and they're starting this service whereby." Uh, you go online, and it's a bit like, uh, you know, Skype or whatever it is, and and the, you have a person in Japan because people like to buy imports. Apparently, buying imports, especially from Japan, is is quite desirable financially. If you've got some of their records, Japanese releases in your collection that you're selling in your shop, you can extra, you can put an extra few well on it. Well, regardless of where you live, yeah, as long as it's a Japanese. Yeah. Yeah, one. Yeah. There's, there's one in the south of England. He's starting to use it, and the one in Serbia, he's been using it. And what he do is, yeah, I don't know whether it's uh, there's some gizmo that this kid's got, and he'll go into six record shops in Japan, and he'll scan through the shops, and he'll give him a brief summary of what he's looking for. So this kid goes, right, all right, we've got, oh, we've got one here. What's this one? What do you think of that one? That's good. Yeah, with the price, blah blah blah. Yeah, I'll have that one. So he takes that one out. 
He's basically a shopper. Right. He's basically a shopper for uh, for records. And he's picking up loads of rarities, loads of collectible stuff. It might be five quid for that, 25 quid for that. But he, he can put his chip on top. And once he's paid for the shipping and things like that, and it's it's very good. Financially, it's very good because he's getting stuff that he won't be able to necessarily get his hands on because he can shift through. It's a good idea, though, isn't it? Yeah. yeah it makes he, sense. He can go to a record shop in Japan virtually and pick what he wants. And let him look via yeah. his phone at they what They get a little is. bit of commission, yeah. ship it over for him, and he puts it in his shop. Or he knows what's coming. He knows it's going to take two weeks or whatever. So he lets it know what's coming in. And, and by the yeah. time it's got into his shop, he's sold it. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, it's, a good, it yeah great, it's a good idea, though. I, think I like that idea. I think that would spread into other things as well. Well, mm. it already is there, really. But I thought for that sort of I don't know, vinyl thing, I thought it's a great, great. Because a lot of rarities out there. And I, I, I thought, I'll listen to this podcast, but... The more I it, the more I find it interesting about the resurgence of cassettes that run about that, how that's really going well, and what vinyls are collectible, what aren't really that good, what to look for in shops, what is a no-no, things like that. Don't ask me what you are, I can't remember now. <laughs> what, what are no? If it's, it's in a poor condition, it's got a scabby cover, then forget it anyway. That's part of the deal. Mm. Yeah, if, if it's got a scabby cover, it's not really financially desirable. Well, that's with most things, isn't it? Though? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, well, let's uh, wrap it up in a non-scabby cover. <laughs> in a non-scabby cover. <laughs> Until next time. Goodbye. Bye.